Welcome back to another episode of the Todd Durkin Impact Show. And I hope your week is off to an amazing start. I am so excited for you to listen to today's episode with Dr. Jana Hibbler, a naturopathic medicine. And we are talking all what it takes to get to your next level. We're talking epigenetics. We're talking hormones. We're talking gut health. You're like, epigenetics. What is epigenetics? My friend, when you hear all about what this is, you are going to be enlightened and empowered about what Dr. Jana has to say. So in just a moment, buckle up your bootstraps and be ready to rock and roll. First, when we're talking about your next level, I want to invite you to a very special webinar I'm doing uh, as this drops. To, uh, this drops here on Monday, February 19th. Tomorrow, Tuesday, February 20th, I have a webinar and it's called Your Next Level. If you'd like to be on that webinar, tune in. It's at four o'clock West Coast, seven o'clock on the East Coast. If you're listening to this episode after February 20th, have no fear. I'm going to allow you access to the complete webinar all the way up for one more month up until March 20th. All you have to do, go over to toddurkin.com, toddurkin.com, and get the webinar replay. But you got to sign up to get that. So go to toddurkin.com, get the replay, or if it's before 4 o'clock on the 20th of February, then you can watch it live and be part of your next level. Whatever it takes, get there, my friend, and listen in, because it's all about what is it going to take to get to your next level. Speaking of your next level, how do you build your legacy by harnessing the power of epigenetics, setting the tone for seven generations of health? What? Yup. <laughs> yeah, welcome to today's episode with Dr. Janet Hibbler. She's a naturopathic medicine, and she's a functional medicine doctor who's been practicing for 10 years, I like that number. She's on a mission to revolutionize healthcare through the power of epigenetics. This passion began during her own health journey as a child, and it was ignited during preventative medicine rotations at Yale Hospital in New Haven, Connecticut. Her doctoral thesis, approved by Yale professor Mark Matty, was titled, Genetic Alterations Due to Environmental Toxicities. And she has since been diligently working to empower others to get the most out of their genes. Today, she runs an IV therapy clinic in Whitefish, Montana, that utilizes botanical medicine, advanced testing, and nutrition so each person can live in their God-given passion and purpose so each person can be in his or her element. My friend, buckle up for an amazing episode with Dr. Jana Hibbler. Let's go to her right now. All right, all right. We are here with the one and the only Dr. Jana Hibbler, and I'm so pumped up. Jana, it's great to have you in the house. Thanks so much for having me today. <laughs> it was so great to be in Whitefish, Montana recently, as mentioned, uh, with the Impact X Group. And one of the things that we did, we went over to Jana's shop, uh, the IV element, and we got treated. And what a treat it was to meet her, spend time with her. We ended up spending about, I don't even know, Jana, was it like three hours there? Oh uh, my gosh, we had a drip party. <laughs> a drip party. We yeah. had IVs. We're going to talk about that in the show today. So I want to talk about the drips. I want to talk about gut health, hormones, and I want to talk about this thing called epigenetics, which we had the longest, deepest discussion on how to how to change seven generations of health. So we this got is the future of medicine. The man. future. Yeah. So hey, it was awesome uh, back in in late January uh, to meet you and uh, to spend time with you and have the group meet you. I'm like, man, I need to introduce you to our podcast uh, listeners today because you are a wealth of information, and I appreciate you being on today's show. I want to start with just some get to know yous for those who heard the bio, like, hey, she sounds really interesting, and she is, but but check this out, some of the other, other things that you may not know. She was the captain of the Ferris State dance team. Whoa. Ooh. Yep. Sure. Uh, yeah, I like that. She was a Zumba dance instructor in New York City. I and mean, we should have like an, a separate yeah. episode on some of this stuff. Um, <laughs> I'll dance. <laughs> Exodus uh, is her son who we got a chance to meet. He's a, a seven-year-old 
uh, boy, and he's a warrior, and I, it was great to meet him. Born and raised in Michigan, third generation doctor. That's man. what's up, <laughs> man. And uh, so many great things that you're doing, and uh, most importantly now as the owner of the IV Element in downtown Whitefish. You all know I've been spending time. I'm always talking about Whitefish, Montana. If you're ever in Whitefish or you're at a retreat of mine in Whitefish. Make sure you go see Dr. Jana because let me tell you what, uh, you will be you you'll be grateful. I'll just say that you will feel like a million bucks afterwards. So Jana, are you ready to rock and roll? Let's do this. <laughs> I'm gonna dive right in because we're talking health, and um, I love the vibe inside your shop and and all that it uh, represents. But talk about your definition of health. What is health to you? Yeah, um, health is more than just the absence of disease. Mm. It is achieving balance mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. Mm. All of these parts all fit together to make up our being. And yep. we can't, you know, love each other and go out into the world if we don't have that balance. Yeah. What I loved about our discussion when we were talking and now is you obviously are well skilled and and knowledgeable on the on the the medical side, but you bring in the faith side. And um, I really, really enjoyed talking about your whole philosophy. And you had seven different elements of health. Yes. What are those seven, what, what are those seven elements to you when it, it incorporates health? It is a formula to achieve that health. So we've got our movement, our nutrition, our stress management, sleep hygiene, digestion, community, and environment. And all seven of those things make up how we feel and how we interact with others. Mm. Um, one more time. I would say it again. So one more time. But, but, you know, hey, I can see it. Everyone's like writing in their phone, their notes section. Like, okay, so <laughs> one more time. Nice, no, nice and slow. Go ahead. Number one. Movement. Movement uh, that done. That's Movement, you. Done. That's, That's you. Me. You teach us that. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Two. Nutrition. What Nutrition. we're putting into our bodies. You're the expert there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. We team. We team really well. Um. Stress management. Mm. Cortisol and stress will kill someone before anything else. Um. Sleep mm. hygiene. Are we mm. taking that time to recover? I know all about that. Keep right? going. Sleep hygiene. Uh, digestion. So our gut health our microbiome. These are buzzwords that are becoming more and more popular, but gut health is everything. Um, our community. I want to talk, want to talk about that yeah. later on. Keep going. Let's talk, yeah. Let's talk gut health. Um, our community. So who mm. do you surround yourself with? Like who's on your team? Preach. Who, who's your team? And yep. then our environment. Um, you know, my thesis was genetic alterations due to environmental toxicities. And mm. in that time, I really found we broke it down how each chemical and toxin truly will impact your hormones, your metabolism, your ability to perform. Um, and so that's why our environment is that seventh element. So one of the things that you're doing now is you're taking these seven elements into a practice. When we came in there because of Stacy Smith, Stacy Smith over at the homestead said, you need to go see my girl, Dr. Jana. Trust me, <laughs> Todd, go see her. So I said, all right, Stacy, I'm going. So we take the whole group downtown Whitefish and we go see you. We walk in. The next thing I know, there's like eight of us folks hooked up to IVs. And we don't even know like practically what the heck you're putting What's in. Happening? So, much trust. so can you please, I'll, I'll just full reveal, what the heck was in those IVs <laughs> that, that you were pumping in? Because we felt like a million bucks afterwards. Felt and we, so good. But what, what was in those? I know there's well, different you know options. You know, I've been doing IV therapy for over 10 years. So mm. I was doing this back in that med school, but you guys, particularly, you guys got loaded up with high dose vitamin C, B complex, B12, zinc, uh, let's see here, amino acids and glutathione. So mm, this glutathione. was like what we call our rocket fuel formula. <laughs> I like rocket fuel. Rocket Take it to the next level. <laughs> hey, why, why is IV therapy... Sure. It's become, it seems like in the last two, well, the last few years, it's become more prevalent, more popular. Why? Mm -hmm. is that? Well, you know, it's uh, the decline of our gut health. So everyone's gut health is compromised nowadays. And we could do a whole nother podcast on that. But, you know, to give you a little sneak peek, our gut health becomes compromised with processed foods, um, traveling, our environment, and 
Um, what happens then is the lining of our gut breaks down so we can't absorb nutrients. So mm. that means when you eat your food, like even if you're eating a perfect diet, you might only be absorbing as low as 10 to 20% of those nutrients, hmm. 10 to 20%. So to compensate, we then do IV therapy, which is 99.9. .9. So you're getting almost a hundred percent of those vitamins straight into the bloodstream. So you can guarantee be getting, say, if you're taking five grams of zinc, you're getting all of that, you know, five grams of zinc. Mm -hmm. um, when we eat it or take a pill, it's not guaranteed because it goes through the gastrointestinal tract and is not always absorbed. Interesting. Yeah. It mm -hmm. seems like just the last few years, I see more and more IV type shops with naturopathic doctors like yourself mm -hmm. opening up around the country. And I think there's going to be even more of these places that are focusing on recovery at all levels. I wasn't aware that it was really for the gut health aspect, obviously really it's from the vitality and health aspect overall. Yeah. That's interesting. So, and that's really, and that you bring up a good point. Since I have been doing this for over 10 years, I will say, wow, has this industry changed so much? Mm. Um, a lot of clinics are ran by nurses now and may, and I would say probably can't go into the deep like gut health level um yeah. they're doing more what i'd call like wellness you know great way to just boost and hydrate but if we want to get into more medical physiological changes you're going to need to see a doctor with that yeah, yeah. how many nurses and mds are mm -hmm. do you see now in your practice are they mm -hmm. is that part of who you work with yeah, I love teaming up. I mean, just like in sports, it's always a team approach. And when we can um, team up with others, the patient gets better faster. So when we're doing patient-centered care, let's focus on what the patient needs to get better. I love your team. You talk about in Whitefish, your parents were, you know, are doctors and you come from a lineage of doctors and MD. Oh, right? so conventional family. Yeah. So I'm cool. third generation. I'm actually the first first doctor that went more holistic, but you know, my, the way I was raised was completely conventional. So it's kind of cool. Cause then I get to like meet people yeah. on all ends of the spectrum. Yeah. Um, they've seen and been with all of it. So yeah. as a parent, when we were together, your, your, um, passion for this NAD, right. Mm. You were talking about NAD and, and you, you know, you asked me about, have I done it? Um, and I had not yet used NAD, at least, um, an injection or an, an IV. Yeah. Can you talk about NAD and why you feel it's important? Yeah, it is the latest biohacking tool we have now to help prevent and delay aging. Um, it is our cup and fountain of youth, so to say, uh, NAD is a derivative of vitamin B3. So it's all natural. Um, but what it's doing is it's going in and working on a mitochondrial level, actually helping more ATP be pumped in that electron transport chain. And so as a side effect, we have less inflammation, less pain, more energy. I've seen people's libidos skyrocket from this NAD treatment. Um, you just feel so good. And it is the best way to prevent cancer and chronic disease. Mm -hmm. So with that, is, is the injection the only way to get it? Like how, yeah. how would you do it? Well, I don't say naturally because it's natural, but how sure. would you boost it without even a shot? Yeah. So shots and then IV therapy are both can be close to that hundred percent. So that's the best way to do it. There mm -hmm. is also on the market, you can get NMN, which is a, you know, a supplement that you can take orally. It is the precursor to NAD, which is also an option. But again, if we have any, you know, compromised gut issues, you may not be getting your money's worth. And that's the caution I have with that one. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So you would recommend NAD for most people. Is it once a week, once a month, once a quarter? How often would yeah. they would they get like if you lived in Whitefish or there's someone in your area, naturopathic doctor that does IVs sure. or injections? Is this something that would be done weekly, monthly? How often? Yeah. So, you know, it depends what you're trying to achieve and your your, you know, medical history. I would say if you're a general healthy person, you might do a series, which might look like five to eight drips um, twice mm. a year. So you do a series twice okay. a year. Okay. Um, but if you're an athlete, you might be pumping this stuff once a week. I mean, it really depends if you're looking to peak your performance, <laughs> you could do it more often. 
Um, and I, when I say performance, you know, that's really great um, for the gym, the field, and the boardroom. If you're really looking to increase your stamina, um, endurance with your muscles, but also your brain, it helps, you know, your brain work better too. So NAD, you're you're a big believer in it. If there's like a top three or five, like I'm always like glutathione is always glutathione. Like, yes, right. Glut every glut you got to have glutathione. glutathione. <laughs> but NAD is one of your 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 big ones. Oh yeah, that's that's where we're going, and um, hmm. I'm hoping it can be more. It is an expensive treatment, but I am hoping it's more accessible to everyone um, in the near future here. And my friends, you're listening in right now to Dr. Jana. If you're like, well, I don't have a naturopathic doctor in my area. I'm just going to suggest then take a trip to Whitefish. I don't care if it's for two days, like a wellness retreat and go That's see bad. her and spend like a half a day with her. And I'm telling you, you will feel better just in every area of your life. Um, and, and, you know, even just a few hours we spent as a crew with you, Jana, was was awesome. Um, and there's so much I can talk to you about, but I really want to go in this area today um, when it comes to epigenetics. Let's do what, it. What, what's what is epigenetics? Because for me, uh, we walked away like Jana is NAD and epigenetics. We talked about, <laughs> like, man, we kind of got blown away with with our conversation and the depth that you have studied epigenetics. Can you please reveal to all of our listeners today what is epigenetics? Yeah, epigenetics. Um, well, we're all given a set of genes at birth right? Mm -hmm. So we've heard of genetics. Sure. Epigenetics is that ability to then turn on and off certain gene expressions. And so a lot of people might, you might have seen like online or something where they say that, you know, um, they say your genes are what load the gun and then your lifestyle is what pulls the trigger. Mm. So epigenetics is giving power back to yourself and your body that you have control and power over your own health. And they're actually finding that our lifestyle is more um, going to be, is more indicative of someone's health outcomes than their actual genes. So let's dive into this a little bit more. So we can turn on and off our gene expressions by the seven elements of health that we started with at the beginning. Okay. Yep. Yep. So those seven elements of health are what turn on and off our gene signal. So as an example, you might have in your genetic code, the predisposition to develop diabetes. Okay. But through your lifestyle and those seven elements of health, you do not have to ever actually get diabetes. So you can look around the room at your family reunion and see that, you know, your parents, your cousins, your brothers and sisters, everyone has diabetes. But if you're that one lone wolf that decides, hey, I'm going to take control of my health. I'm going to take control of these seven elements. You never have to get diabetes. And it is so cool that we have the power to have that again. Mm. So it made me think of something. I have seven brothers and sisters. I'm the youngest of eight kids. My oh. one sister has diabetes. It's okay. not, it's not, it, it's quote, not in our family. Okay. Like my mom and dad don't have it. No one okay. else has it. She has it. Is that something that one of those seven factors potentially may have brought out that gene expression? Yep. Yep. So basically, mm -hmm something in her line got turned on. So it's like, it was always kind of sitting there and then, you know, somebody lit the fire. Maybe she had too much stress. Maybe she's not eating right or sleeping well. And yeah. then boom, that was turned on and it was game over. Now, the also equally powerful thing is that even if you contract diabetes, I, what I do, my mission is I help reverse these things as well. And at the very least delay um, progression of these diseases, but oftentimes, if we do the work, we can actually reverse and improve our glucose levels and go back to this healthy, healthy metabolically but, person. But if it's something like, like in this case, type one, you can't reverse type one diabetes. Oh, then okay. it would be, yeah, it wasn't type two. It was like at oh, 50 years old. So it's okay. type one, right? You would then have to just manage the, the glucose <laughs> levels, right? Yeah. Type two is what I was referring to. Type one's yeah, a little sure. bit harder, yeah. but there are still things that can improve outcomes. Certainly. Absolutely. And yeah. it's like, I'm getting my own diagnosis, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
So my father, he died. And if you've been a listener to this show, you, you know, I've revealed everything, but my father died when he was 58 of a heart attack um, on that. Do you believe that? Like even myself, I'm always like, okay, I'm, I'm getting close to, you know, I'm, mm. I'm, I'm like six years away from 58. I got to make sure yeah. that I, I, I don't end up the same way pops ended up. Um, do you believe that epigenetics and obviously those seven aspects, mm -hmm. I, you know, that's the factors that, Hey, you can reverse your gene expression or your yep. genes in order to live your healthiest life. Correct. Exactly. That's spot on. And, you know, if we take this one step further. If I was your acting doctor, I would love to run a genetic panel on you, especially when it comes to early onset um, cardiac events, such as your dad's heart attack. It might be smart and worth doing a genetic screening, particularly for the gene MTHFR. Hmm. MTHFR has an increased risk of cardiac events um, earlier in age. And the simple solution and quote unquote treatment is just taking activated or methylated B vitamins. Um, some people, and actually quite a bit of the population is not able to methylate their genes. Um, and so that'll increase um, cholesterol levels. It'll increase inflammation. And it also, um, you're not able to absorb your or methylate your B vitamins. So I think we do a little genetic screen on you because I think you're, I can bet you're living your seven elements of health to your best. You are the picture of health for all of us. Um, Every, everyone's but, like, yeah, TD, you, you go, you, you, you be the guinea pig, TD. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you're yeah. But well, hey, let's let, your genes. Why let, not? Let, let, let's keep going on this because I, I have yeah. a question for you. I'm going to challenge you. Okay. So I'm going to go deep on y'all because I've, I've shared, I've, I've teased y'all over the last few months and I'm not going to do it today, but I've teased y'all in the sense of this sleep apnea thing. Mm. I'm convinced that my dad, while he died of a heart attack, this is the first time I'm saying this, by the way, publicly, mm. I'm convinced that my dad who died of a heart attack at age 58, while he did die of a heart attack, I know for a fact that he had sleep apnea. This guy snored like a bear and I heard him stop breathing when I was like in high school. He'd like he'd be, he'd be, he'd be taking a nap and he but like you stop breathing. Well, um, what I've studied a lot, and I'm gonna come out a lot harder in 2024 as I do my own research. But he, um, it this did sleep apnea didn't even come a thing until 1993. Well, he died in '92, so it wasn't even a quote disease in '92. Yeah. And now yeah. I'm like, if if uh, I told Melanie if I was to die of a quote heart attack. Um, be like, oh, Todd was a good guy and he died of a heart attack. Well, no, I didn't because I have sleep apnea. I shared this in May of 2023. I got diagnosed. And now that I know it, it's called the silent killer, the silent yeah. killer. And I'm like, dang, dad had a sleep apnea. If yeah. we only knew then what we know now, that was preventable. Right. While it says sleep apnea, you know, while it says heart attack. So what did you, I don't want to go off on a sleep apnea thing. That's another, no. but talk this is about why, let's, let's get your MTHFR ran. I guarantee he probably had the SNP and, or, you know, it could be a few variants. Um, and you might too. And then it's also power then to know for your children, right? Like this is so important. Um, but I also want to just bring the light, you know, the then importance of making sure our nutrient levels are optimization. Mm. So particularly iron and B12 for you. That way, if you know you're not getting a lot of oxygen on a, you know, normal basis, then we're going to want to like offset that by making mm. sure B12 and iron can deliver oxygen mm. to all your tissues. Mm. The other thing we're going to want to go and look at, you know, if we're going from a naturopathic point of view is like, why is that inflammation going on? Sometimes it is truly structural, but other times it's, I have fixed it just by simply doing a food panel. We remove some food sensitivities, um, intolerances or allergies, and then you don't have that inflammation anymore and you yeah. breathe better. So, and that comes back to the gut guys. We're, That's we're, why we're going to talk about the gut. <laughs> we're we're going to do like a bunch of series together, Janet, because <laughs> there's like, when it comes to this topic of just uh, health, like this is major health stuff i mean it's always trying to i don't want to say biohack but biohack our it health is. so we yeah. can live our best life and i publicly declared before that i'm going to live to 110 years old a good 110 not not like yeah. <laughs> an old one <110. laughs> i want to be feeling great mm -hmm. um 
And that's one of the things that I'm like, man, these next 50, 60 years, I want to be on fire. Uh, yeah. It's not like I want to slowly decline. And I know everyone listening in right now is the same way. It's like, how can we optimize our health now? And Jana, when I met you um, back in January, it was like, man, she, this girl's a smart woman. And folks, again, you may want to go to Whitefish for a lot of reasons. And one of them, go go over to the, the IV element and see her. But keep going on this, this topic of epigenetics. Um, and it, it makes me think like, okay, your parents, whatever the, the genes your parents give us, right? Yeah. It's how do we change that? Or how do we make sure that we can um, stave off any disease that's in our genes using those seven elements, correct? Correct. And you know, truly, if we're talking from athletic perspective, it takes the same amount of discipline and focus mm -hmm. and commitment, just like your training schedule. You have to be as diligent with your nutrition as you are with your training. Mm -hmm. And that is how we live our lives. You know, I go to, you know, a social event and they're like, oh, just have this one food. It's or this one drink, it's just one time. No, I'm a hard stop. No, people cannot <laughs> penetrate Wait. my my mind with that. With with drinking, is that with drinking and food, like there to me, there's no like reason to break. Like I've been gluten free okay. since 2009. 2009, ah. I found out it was ah. bad for my thyroid. My thyroid health was compromise so i made a change and i've never gone back not cheated once since 2000 ah, so you haven't had a you haven't had not in a drug not in a pasta dish or not in a salad what? thing or a a food sauce i mean i have been made sure no gluten has touched this body wow wow and you know what i'm not overweight because of it my thyroid can work now and that is something that my family have, they can't do because they can't let go of that gluten. It's just so easy to just have a little piece here and, and there. So are you saying that people who are overweight, one of the things, obviously there's seven different elements. One sure. of those things could be gluten mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the addiction to the, I'll say gluten, right? Mm -hmm. The inflammation, the inflammatory process that it, that it has that yeah. it inflames us and makes us crave sugar and carbs and everything else even more. That role, yeah, that gut health, candida, sugar cravings, that's a whole topic we could talk about with gut health. But with the thyroid, so if someone has Hashimoto's or their thyroid does not work well, mm. um, what happens is the gluten protein goes and binds. And what it does is it blocks the thyroid hormone from being able to bind. It's a competitive antagonism system. And so the gluten binds, so then the thyroid can't. And so as the second you let go and remove the gluten, then your thyroid can do its job. Go figure. <laughs> so, man, would you say that would be, if Dr. Jana Hibbler had seven rules, would Ooh. one of your rules be, don't consume gluten. Don't eat gluten. If, if there's, you know, if someone has a hard time making thyroid hormone, yes. How many people have a hard time with that? Uh, nowadays, almost everyone, because the thyroid is one of the weakest glands in our body. Our, our thyroid and adrenals get hit so hard, um, with stress and radiation and environmental pollutants that, you know, if we're having a hard time staying lean and mean, we got to cut out that, that gluten. Mm -hmm. mm. And it's mm. not to be trendy or cool. It's actually so your thyroid can work better and your metabolism can run. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. All right. So yeah. let me ask you another question. Cause I'm, I'm very intrigued. By the way, if someone's <laughs> as curious as me right now and they want to follow you, do sure. you have a newsletter or in uh, like a website they can visit or your, your, I know you have Instagram, but where can someone sure. follow you? Cause this, I, I'm intrigued right now with, I got to make sure these people follow you. Come on. Oh, thank you I'm so much. Yeah. Right. I, you know, I'm on Instagram as the IV element dot project. That's probably my biggest like um, place to find me right now. Yeah. Um, we do have our website, which we can attach at the end here, sure. but you know, I don't even have a lot on the website cause I'm such a, I'm, I'm going to be on your, I'm going to be on your tail. Person. I'm going to be on you to make sure okay. we, we got, you're going to have to have a book here. So I'm going to have you know, the book, like Dr. Jana's seven or 10, 10, it's a good number. Okay. Uh, 
like your rules of, of living, but the IV element uh, dot project, check it out on that. Here, here's another question. And, and this is kind of a crazy question, but I'm, I'm in a deep mood right now. Um, <laughs> Do it. If, if <laughs> this is kind of a weird question, but theoretically, theoretically, okay. if, if someone wanted to create like the healthiest baby ever, mm -hmm. or you have a child and you want to create the healthiest child, like, man, I got three kids and like, uh, I, I want to create the healthiest baby baby where where would one start like where like i don't care if they're six months old or six years old what as a parent like right yeah. you're a parent right what would you like what are two three four five things that one should do to say this is how i'm gonna make my child healthy the strongest well the first thing i think is bringing consciousness that our genes, I was at the Van Andel Institute for a study, um, an epidemiological study found that our genes, our epigenetics can be passed down as far as seven generations. So the first thing to bring to consciousness is mm. that what you do today, what mm. you put in your body, on your body, around your body, mm. that is not just going to affect your life, but that's going to affect your children, their children. And seven generations down is that will just blow your mind and that's a proven fact yes the van andel institute grand rapids michigan it's and you're it, from, is that is that where you're from grand rapids i know you're from michigan i'm from um i'm from a little town called marshall marshall okay <laughs> a little Boy, farm town but so yeah. you're saying that what you put in your mouth today mm -hmm. can affect seven generations Seven generations. That's of research proven. Yes. Interesting. Seven generations. I bet you could call them or Google it, pull up the article. But I uh, was lucky enough to get to be there that day that those findings came out. And because they brought me in as a guest um, physician, since this is what I do, like this is my my world. And I thought it was maybe, th I was going to guess like three to four generations. And when they came up with seven I was like, oh my gosh, this is, this is what we need to be doing in medicine right now. And also why, you know, I want to look more into this. There needs to be more research, but we have had an explosion of ADHD and autism and Asperger's and all these sensory development delays. And there's a lot of, you know, reasons these could be happening, but I certainly think like our toxic exposure, like our environment what it has done is it started to accumulate, right? Like, cause you know, GMO foods and some of these things started in like the 1950s mm. and it's just catching up to us now. Um, we're seeing a decline in fertility. Um, gosh, when I first started even 10 years ago, I only had, you know, saw patients for fertility issues in their forties. Then it was like their thirties. And now I have 20 year olds that cannot oh get pregnant. Yeah. So we got to start asking why, like, why is this happening? Right. Is that, you think it's, I mean, there's a lot of things, but is it pesticides? Is it the food quality has gone down? Is it because we're not eating good foods? What, right. I mean, what, what, I, what are your... I think it's all accumulated. I think it's just overall too much toxic exposure. You know, the average person is exposed to over 700,000 toxins per day. Stop. 700,000. Yes. Oh. Yes. What? Yes. Gosh, I'm eating this stuff. Oh, I just said I'm eating this stuff. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Pardon the pun, but this is like good facts. It's oh, and, good. and so once you bring consciousness, and that's the thing is that hmm. you know, yeah, we've got a great liver. Like it, our livers and kidneys, they are meant to detox and filtrate, but not this much. We were not meant to handle this much. Yeah. And no wonder why our metabolism is slowing down. No wonder why our hormones are being implicated. Like. Our, it's too much burden. It, our bodies were not designed for this much. So I know most people, I don't think, oh, and if what I'm eating today is going to affect seven generations, I don't even think, hey, my great grandkids, what I'm eating today. But right. I do think about my kids and I think about my kids' sure. kids. Like I think yeah. it goes down to maybe like two generations. The mm -hmm. fact that you said seven generations though makes me think, man, that's a lot of generations. That's that's I, hundreds of years. Right? I know. I know. Right. And if we think spiritually, like our body is a temple, we are meant to honor to me our now. body. Talk to me. Talk to me. Right. And mm -hmm. if this is our temple and our heart mm. is our gateway to God, mm. like how can we reach him mm. if we are full of toxin burdens? 
and it's everywhere. It's alcohol, it's processed foods. It is all eventually going to block our connection with the Lord and each other. What do you write in your book? Come on. <laughs> what do you write in your book? I've I, been I a single mom, you know, I'm a soul, I'm the sole parent to a seven year old. Not a lot of extra time, but maybe we can make things happen, Todd. <laughs> I'm telling you, like, that's, that's good right there. That's really, really good. Epigenetics. And thank you for sharing all that on epigenetics. Um, I've worked with a naturopathic doctor for five plus years. Oh, meeting you, you, you know, I, I, I'm adding you to the list as my go-to uh, person because it's like you, you, you're extremely skilled and knowledgeable. Um, what other kind of doctors work with epigenetics? Sure. Or is it just so, naturopathic doctors, but obviously, like overall, what, what types of yeah, doctors would do that? And not even. Um, so I would say, if you were to Google the term you're looking for, is functional medicine doctors. There you go. Um, they may not all specialize in what I do, but I would say in general, a functional medicine doctor could be an ND, an MD, or a DO. Yep. Um, but what it takes is this additional training. So we all go through med school, we go through residency, but then functional medicine is additional time, additional training. So we approach health from a more root cause preventative way. Um, to give an example, vitamin D, we all get our vitamin D levels checked, right? Okay. Yep. There's this range that comes back and a normally trained doctor um, might say like, if it's like a 43, 50, they'll say, oh, that's normal. You're fine. Go ahead. But when you're a functional medicine doctor, we want vitamin D levels at a 70, hmm. a 70. So if I see something less than 70, I take action. I say, you know what? We need to get on a regimen because the research shows if we have suboptimal vitamin D levels, not low, just suboptimal even, then we are going to have an increased risk of cancer, allergies, mm. auto, autoimmune disease, and then a whole other plethora because vitamin D is a steroid hormone. Let's not forget we need steroid vitamin D to run all of our other sex hormones as well. So, so if, if someone if those, has hormone problems, they might just be but, low in vitamin D. That's, that's it. what I was going to ask now, as yeah. far as hormones, you just yeah. said those numbers for, for vitamin D. What yep. about testosterone? Yeah. Virgin, what, what, how do you, how does that fit in from a functional medicine practitioner side? Yeah. What, what do you look for in, in the, in the, again, the testosterone, progesterone, estrogen? Yep. Uh, you know, what so about the first the first thing I uh, look for is what is your cortisol or your stress level? There you go. There you because go. if you have high, if you have high stress, which we all do, yep. Then for a male, it's going to have your the results will be low testosterone, and for a female, it'll be low progesterone. Mm -hmm. And for both genders, both male and female, when we have high cortisol, it pushes estrogen pathways. And that is not good folks, because then we're talking about all our estrogen dominant cancers like colon cancer that both genders get. And we don't want the estrogen because like, then that means less muscle mass, more aging, mm. more anxiety. We can, I mean, we can get all into the hormone and brain chemistry connection, but high estrogen means anxiety. That might be the reason I feel like it's all connected. So what about a kid? that has high anxiety. I mean, there's mm. anxiety at all levels, right? Obviously sure. adults, children now seem like the anxiety has shot through the roof. Uh, oh, in so high sad. School. I mean, young, would that be tied to hormones and food yeah. or is it more of the environment and the, because of, again, not to go off, but social media and all the other stuff yeah. or the combination? Yep. I would say food is going to be a big one. Interesting. Hmm. Um, the second one is what's the screen time? Mm. Screen time. Mm. There are studies that show increased mm. anxiety and depression sure. with screen time. And sure. think all I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, I was climbing trees, I was rolling in the dirt. Well, phones was, didn't exist <laughs> when I was a kid. Phones <laughs> didn't exist, so it wasn't even an issue. <laughs> right. I wasn't on any of that stuff. Right. And our kids are, oh my goodness, they're a burden. I had to pull my son out of the public school because 
in kindergarten, they're having kids on screens. And I'm like, that's going to throw off his glucose regulation, increase his cortisol, mess up his hormones and brain chemistry. No wonder there's anxiety and ADHD in a third grader. You know, Jane, like it's Jane, ridiculous. You know what, I, you know what I love about you is, is you are walking your talk. I've <laughs> seen it firsthand. Right? Thank I, you. I, I met you a couple yes. months ago and I, I, I am seeing it because I see it in you personally and how with your family and what you're doing, you're walking your talk and you're living it daily. And oh, um, it, it's, it's really awesome to see and to hear the difference of how many different types of doctors embrace this, this form of epigenetics and that I'm, I'm very oh. intrigued on going deeper and deeper uh, on this. So I love, you know, I love functional medicine. I just got to throw it out there. I love functional medicine because, so we go to these, it's called integrated for functional medicine conferences in New York city every year. They're led by Dr. Mark Hyman. And you know what? It's really mm. cool because whether you're an MD, ND or DO, it is the bridge because we're all, it's the bridge to bring all the, and that's again, the team approach. It's the bridge Absolutely. to bring them all together. Cause we're like, you know what? Right now our system, it's a sick system. We that's want it. people to be well and prevent disease. Amen. It's so cool. Yeah. yeah. I, I've said it for years, quarterback your own health. Don't rely yeah. on just one doctor. It's, it, you know, they do a great job in, 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 in both the, you know, the, the traditional conventional world, but we've got to make sure that whatever's going on, that we are proactive. We quarterback our own health uh, on all aspects. It's people uh, like Dr. Jana that can help us really maximize and optimize our health. So uh, I'm loving this conversation. I'm going to talk your secret sauce. Ooh, I'm so going to talk about you, but if, okay. if, if there was... <laughs> Let's say one or two things that mm. Dr. Janet does to really focus on optimizing genes, your genes, uh, and even delay aging. Oh, yeah. I, I said the word delay aging. Delay, yep. What, that's what would it be? What would what would the secret sauce be? Secret sauce would be focus on your gut health. There's one thing you did. As Hi Hippocrates hmm. said, all disease begins in the gut. And it is so true because our gut is where our brain chemistry is made. Think over, gosh, it used to be 70%. Now they're saying up to 90% of your serotonin is made in the gut. Hmm. Your immune system is modulated via your gut, your inflammation, hmm. and all of that ties into how fast we age. So if you mm. really want to delay aging, obviously we want to put in the good nutrients. We want to remove, you know, the bad stuff like toxins. And then in doing so, we focus on the gut. You mm. do that and you're golden. Goodness. So this whole gut health thing, which has been talked about the last few years, like everyone's talking about gut health. It's a real thing. Oh yeah. I mean, since my very first patient, all we do, the, the first test we run is a stool analysis. That yes. is our number one test. Huh. Yeah. So I personally want to check your poop, your genetics, and your nutrient levels. And I think that is going to peak your performance, Todd. <laughs> Dare I say, since you're already peaked. You don't want to check mine. <laughs> she said yours, folks. She wanted to check yours, not mine. <laughs> um. But that's, it's interesting because I think to optimize health, you have to get to that level, right? You got to get to the level. It's not just, uh, you got to check your blood. You got to check your stool, yep. uh, you got saliva, all the things. I'm mean, again, for five years, I've been doing that, Dr. Jana. Like I have been with the doctors I work with and there's, uh, I'll say, quote, a team. Um, yeah. Those are things that I've done because I want to know not only what's, what, where, where am I checking out good? Are mm -hmm. there any inflammatory marks or red marks that are like, Hey, this is not good. Get this thing addressed. So yep. um, that's very interesting. So that, that would be your, that'd be your go-to. I got to add that to the list. Cause I'm writing your book as we speak, by the way, <laughs> You've got so many good things here. I'm going to come out with an outline and say, all right, Dr. Janet, the podcast episode is turning into your best-selling book, right? Oh like my God. I love it. Well, you know, who's going to write it is Exodus, my son, because right. I started vitamin doping him when he was, when he was vitamin in the world. Doping. I like that word. I've been doping. vitamin doping him. Oh yeah. So, and I'll tell you what, the proof is in the pudding because he came out 10 pounds. He held up his own head. I never had to worry about his head falling over off to the side. 
He could hold his own, you know, head up. And then at seven months, not even kidding you. So he never crawled. He just went straight to walking. He just started walking at seven months for a boy. Do you know how early that is? And that is the proof of these vitamins. What what's in vitamin doping? Talk to me more. <laughs> what, 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 what vitamin doping? What 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 like what are some what are a few of the vitamins that you yeah you uh, dope him with? <laughs> dope yeah. So I'm talking even in pregnancy, you can get IV therapy, you can get vitamin shots, you can have a super clean, awesome nutrition plan. Um, you know, I would say essential fatty acids for mm-hmm. a developing human brain are really important while you're pregnant. Um, for the baby. So essential fatty acids, um, I would say, you know, vitamin C, zinc, magnesium, um, B vitamins. I mean, gosh, just under everything under the kitchen sink, like I gave you guys, you know, feel yeah, good. No, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting. And again, folks, if you're in an area that is rural and there's no naturopathic doctors around, mm-hmm. right, then, you know, Google where your nearest city is and see if there's naturopathic doctors that do IV therapy, or yes. reach out to Dr. Janet, and she has a great network of people all around the country. Um, or medicine going, <laughs> or just get in a plane, a train, or an automobile and drive to Whitefish and spend time with her. And I promise you, your health will be different. Um, <laughs> anything else on the gut health train? Because you said it was the the number one thing, the secret sauce. Anything else that we're missing that I should be asking that I'm not about mm. gut health? About gut health. Well, I think they're going to just have to tune in for our next talk on gut health. I like that. I like that. Mm-hmm. And just lastly, hormones, another okay. hot topic. And I hate to, you know, we're talking epigenetics, we're talking gut health, we're talking hormones, but it, it's another rage because anti-aging is a big thing. And all of us want to have that, that, uh, you know, feeling like we're, we're, we're still young again, as we get in our 50s, 60s, 70s uh, and, and above. But hormones, um, specifically when it comes to um, everything from growth hormone, testosterone, um, IGF-1, what what is your take on them? Because I know when we talked uh, in Whitefish, you said there's a lot of ways to boost your hormones naturally. Yeah, let's what talk about your, this. Yeah, what is your whole, yeah. I, I thought that was a fascinating conversation and I, I, uh, I want to go deep on that right here. Yeah. Well, let's start with this. So at the age of 30, Mm. at 30 years old, your nutrient levels start to decline. Your hormone levels start to decline. So unless you're actively putting back in, and I also say this for moms, right? Who Mm. grow a baby, breastfeed babies who are, you know, their nutrients are being sucked out of them. Unless you are actively putting those vitamins back in, Mm. the aging process is going to accelerate. And this is why vitamins are so important. Your nutrition is so important. So when it comes to hormone replacement, before we go down the pellet train, I'm always like, well, what's our nutrient status? And we have panels where we can take your blood to find out what is your nutrient status, because I'm going to guarantee you're low in zinc, which is needed to make testosterone or B6 and magnesium, which is needed to make progesterone. These are things that are vital to both males and females. And Mm -hmm. so if we give the body the nutrients it needs, it can actually make its own hormones again. Mm. How cool Mm. is that? So that's where, you know, vitamin therapy is awesome, but maybe it's just, you do it through food. However, I don't, I always say, I don't care how you get your vitamins in. Maybe it's tea, maybe it's juice, maybe it's food, maybe it's IV. I don't care. Just get your nutrients in. And when someone takes a pill form of a vitamin, how much is typically assimilated into the body? Yeah, you know, it it could be 50%. 50, okay. It might be 60, but honestly, like like I said, nowadays, and maybe because I just focus on gut health and I see a lot of gut health patients, Mm -hmm. but we're talking absorption levels as low as 10%. Right, I have heard that 10 to 20% potentially, depending on the quality of the of the, uh, of the supplement, right? I mean, depending yeah, on that. And just your own gastrointestinal health. If you have leaky gut or dysbiosis or SIBO or candida overgrowth, that number is going to go way down. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. And yeah. what else with hormones, anything else? Uh, so you an advocate of all of the anti-aging hormone replacement, or is it, is there like a sequence of 
start natural and then right. there are different different ways to naturally stimulate your adrenal glands right and then right. keep getting yeah. Um, so I'm a naturopathic doctor, right? So we always say least do no harm. So we're going to always start with the safest, least invasive method mm. possible. Yep. So that looks like vitamins first. Um, the second line of therapy would be botanical medicine. Um, I only use botanical medicine that has, you know, evidence-based research behind it. Um, but a lot of them are, and you know, there's a lot of botanicals that can increase sex drive or increase performance and, increase your progesterone or testosterone levels naturally. So that would be my second line of therapy. Mm -hmm. um, and then in that I do require, I'm always like, Hey, give me 90 days in those 90 days. There's also a lifestyle plan. And that's those seven elements of health. You Are go. you willing to do all of them? There you go. Because I tell you what, Todd, I have never had a person not fix their hormones naturally that follow the plan. Hmm. Now, the people that are like, well, I'm going to continue to drink a lot or eat McDonald's. And a lot of people, though, they might eat clean. The biggest culprit I see is stress. And yeah. that is why they yeah. can't heal their hormones is yeah. stress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 But yeah. so long yeah. as we modulate, you heal naturally. It's amazing. I have a, thou I have a thousand questions. I only got one or two more. And then we're <laughs> going to wrap it up. Okay. <laughs> One of the things I hear all the time still, and it was way more like a year or two ago, but it's still around is this sure. brain fog thing. Like, yes. man, that foggy, my, my brain's all foggy. I can't think straight. So obviously when you look at the seven elements, all, that plays a factor. But what do, what do you typically do to attack someone who says, I've got brain fog? Yeah. So the quick and easy of it is NAD. NAD mm -hmm. is going to fix that brain fog right away. But if we're not doing that, the first thing I do is address food because what happens like people I call get a gluten brain or other foods that gluten just brain. You know, yeah, that just don't match with your body. They're kind of like, Whoa, they don't know what's going on. It's, it's the brain fog that happens from eating a food that does not mesh well with your body. So, and it's not always gluten for everybody. I had somebody, it was so weird. It was like pineapple. Pineapple was the thing that was causing health issues for them. Go figure, you know, and that's the importance. The other thing I do want to stress is that individualized medicine matters. Yeah. Each person is different. Even twins they have found have different needs, different biological and physiological needs. So finding out what foods are meant for your body will make or break that brain fog. Mm. Once mm. you remove them, go figure your brain starts working again. <laughs> so, so. In conclusion, some of the big takeaways after you dropping all of that great knowledge on us, if you could narrow it down, do your best to stay away from gluten or don't eat gluten, okay. potentially, right? Sure. I, I heard that gluten could be a major contributor, that yep. NAD is a missing link for most people. It's a natural way to really boost um, all aspects of your, your functioning. Mm -hmm. um, that IV therapy is an awesome way to get vitamins into your system, right? Uh, on yeah. that, mm -hmm. I heard the importance of vitamin D. I've always yeah. heard that, but vitamin D, uh, iron, and B12 you mentioned are yeah. all and get tested and ask to see your tested. your results. Don't just listen. Oh, like oh, you're good, or no, you're not good. Actually, say I want to know the number. Mm. And then mm. take that number to a functional doctor to see if that number is actually going to optimize your wellness. And then obviously our conversation on epigenetics to me is fascinating and it's just starting. And I think we're all trying to optimize our health, our, our fitness, our wellness, our well-being and um, so many great things. Dr. Jana, thank you so much for your thank knowledge, you. your wisdom, your energy. Uh, <laughs> I'm really excited. I'm really excited for uh, just number one, we got to do this again. Um, hey, by the way, all of you who would like to have Dr. Jana back on the show, can you drop me a DM or or just share, like take a picture right now, boop, take a picture <laughs> of this episode, share it on your IG story. Make sure you tag her at the IV element dot project, the IV element dot project um, on that. And, uh, and let me know, let us know, Hey, that was an awesome episode. Make sure you get her back. And uh, Dr. Jana, thank Aww. you. Thank really, you. 
Really okay. awesome. What else uh, should I be asking you that I'm not? That is there anything else? I mean, you you you, you covered a lot. Epigenetics, gut health, um, vitamins, NAD. Yeah. You covered you covered the gamut. I think anything else. Yeah, I just think really taking home, you know, the point, I was really sick as a kid. Um, hmm. I had a lot of breathing issues and skin issues and gut health issues. And I just felt like I went to so many specialists that <laughs> one, no one really gave me answers. And I felt like no one really like listened to like what I was saying my symptoms were like, and kind of like what you say, you got to, you know, take control of it. But you know, epigen like sit in solace and safety and know that you do have control over your health. And if you feel confused or don't know like what your doctor is explaining or don't feel like you have an option in your treatment, I want you to know that you do. Mm -hmm. You do have a choice Breathe. and you have the power to drive your own health. Mm. And this epigenetics, like once you find out what's good for your body, what's bad for your body, and certainly testing is so great to find that data, you then have the power to turn on or off those gene signals that might be hurting you and causing whatever health ailment it is, you can turn off those gene signals and mm. be healthy. Mm. So I gotta say thank you. I gotta say yeah. thank you. I can't wait personally to get back to Whitefish. I know. Let's have you, you back. Can, you can bet your bottom dollar when I'm coming back. I'm coming back into uh, your lab, and I'm gonna come hang. I'm gonna get the NAD yeah. shots and the IV therapies and awesome. and that. Um, no doubt about it. We're gonna so, run some IV NAD on you. We're gonna drip you next you're gonna, time. Hey, I'm, I'm all I'm all for <laughs> it. So, uh, folks, if you have any questions, reach out to Dr. Jana. Uh, she's a great resource for our family, our community now, for all you mind right maniacs out there looking to optimize your health, your fitness, your vitality. Uh, you have another great resource here in Dr. Jana. And I promise you, when you listen to her, you do those things, uh, whether you go find a naturopathic doctor in your community or you reach out to Dr. Jana, you're like, hey, I'm going out to Whitefish. All this stuff about, you know, TD's been talking about Whitefish and the homestead and, and all this stuff. Trust me, just go out there. You will thank me later or just come to a retreat here maybe in the fall of 24 or we get oh, back. Oh, we're doing a retreat. We're doing a retreat. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, we're doing a retreat. Talk to me. They Talk can come me. visit us for that in Whitefish, Talk Montana. To Talk to me. I, I love <laughs> retreats. You know, you don't have to convince me. Uh, <laughs> you don't have to convince me to do another retreat. I'm, I'm all for it. We got retreats coming up next, what, next month. I'll be in Florida. Um, <laughs> man, I, I, we, there's retreats all over the place. But back to Whitefish, you can yeah. always count on that. Dr. Janet, thank you. Have an incredible day. Um, I appreciate all the knowledge you just dropped and I can't wait to see you again real soon. God bless. Thanks. All right. <laughs>